So here at WWDC 2022, really one of the big subjects is the latest version of Apple's computer operating system, Mac OS. This version is codenamed Ventura, and it actually adds a lot of really interesting stuff. Uh, it's part of Apple really transitioning their products away from Intel towards Apple Silicon and merging what iPhones and iPads and MacBooks all do to create a more seamless experience. And unlike a lot of years where the computer operating system update is a little bit of this, a little bit of that, there's actually some really significant stuff here that I think sounds very cool. So probably the biggest thing you're gonna hear about out of Mac OS Ventura is something called Stage Manager. It's a way to handle multitasking. Now traditionally Macs were actually really good at showing you what windows you had open. You just did that four finger, you know, flick up, flick down to see the different apps you had open and the different windows within those apps. But Stage Manager looks a lot cooler. What it does is it takes the primary window, the one you're paying attention to, and floats it right in the center of the screen. Then you can take all the other apps you have open and put them off to the side, sort of floating in a quasi 3D effect is almost like thumbnails on the side. And if you, for example, have a bunch of different windows open in Safari, it'll stack them all together and you can flip through them and bring one to the forefront. You can take two different apps and layer them over each other. You can move the windows around. It seems like a very interesting, very visual way to keep track of multiple programs running at the same time and easily switching between them. Apple's also adding a lot of new functionality to Spotlight. If you don't know what that is, that's the little search bar you bring up that pretty much searches everything. Uh, now it's gonna help you find images better. It's gonna help you find live text. That's where uh, the photo app understands the text that it has an image of in a photo and can read that text. You can start a timer from it. Uh, you can do more quick look stuff. That's where you hit the space bar and you get a preview of things. And you can do a lot of actions right from that Spotlight bar instead of having to use it to find something, then open it up and then do something with it. Of course, the built-in apps in Mac OS, you know, people use those all the time. Uh, a bunch of improvements there. Mail is one of the ones that they called out. Now, I use webmail all the time. I don't use the native Mac mail app built in, but a lot of people do. And some of the big things coming here are things that you might need. Uh, undo send, that's a key one. You send an email and you have a couple of seconds to, to basically claw it back in case you sent the wrong thing, sent it to the wrong person. I've definitely done that. You can also do scheduled send. So I just set the email and I go send it tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning and it just sends then, but I can take care of it now. That's actually a big thing for a lot of people. A lot of people have been unhappy for years with how search works in the Mac OS mail app. It's fine, but it's just not very intuitive. It's not very good. So they're doing a big overhaul of search and it's even gonna help you figure out if you're misspelling something or if you need a synonym for something, you can't remember the exact word. The new search feature is gonna help you with that. Something that we all use on a Mac, even if you don't use the built-in mail app, is of course Safari, Apple's browser, especially because, yes, there are other browsers you can use and people do use on, on MacBooks, but because Safari is the native browser, it's more efficient, it feels faster, it's better for your battery life because it really has this synergy between the operating system and the hardware and the Safari software. Apple even calls it the world's fastest browser and the most power efficient, uh, obviously, if you're using it with Mac hardware. So one of the big things in the new version of Safari that you're gonna see in Ventura, that is shared tab groups. So you can take a whole bunch of tabs in the browser, group them together, and then share that group with other people. And you guys can all look at the tabs together. You can see who's looking at them. You can add tabs to that group. So it's kind of a group tab browsing experience if you want other people looking at the same browser tabs you're looking at, which you may or may not wanna do. I'm really interested in a future piece of technology coming to Mac OS Ventura at some point they just really started to talk about and that is pass keys. It's a way to kind of replace passwords with uh, your Apple ID basically using biometrics to create an entry point to a website and then it keeps it on that machine. You can actually share it with your other Apple devices and you can use it to log into stuff without having to actually come up with an individual password and there's no individual password stored in a cloud somewhere so on paper, it's very secure. You can even hypothetically use pass keys to sign into things on non-Apple devices by bringing your phone with you and using that biometrically to log in. Apple did talk a little bit about gaming on the Mac. Frankly, it's never a big issue for them and it frankly never will be. I can tell because the games they talked about are games that have been out for a while. Resident Evil 8, No Man's Sky, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, Baldur's Gate 3. So when Apple starts talking about new games that are coming out this year on Mac OS, then we can have this conversation. Until then, it's still sort of a secondary thing for them and I think everybody knows that. 
the feature in Mac OS Ventura that I think is going to be the most game changing for the most number of people is camera continuity. It's taking that continuity feature that lets you, you know, start using something on one Apple device and just jump to using it on another Apple device. Well, it's adding that to the camera that's built into your iPhone. So before now, if you wanted to use your iPhone camera as the webcam for your MacBook, you could do that because this has a really good camera in it, but you needed some third-party software. You need to run an app on here, you need to run an app on the MacBook, and it connects, and it kind of works sometimes, doesn't work other times. I never found it to be super reliable, although when it did work, it was great. Now with camera continuity, you're going to be able to just take your iPhone, get the camera going, you know, mount it right on top of your MacBook screen, and just use that camera as a wireless webcam, which is something that I think everybody has wanted for a long time, especially since we all started living our lives through Zoom meetings. Uh, and that's probably the feature I'm most excited about in Mac OS Ventura. So when are you going to be able to get all these great new features and try them out? Well, developers can get a beta version of Ventura now. There's going to be a public beta later in the summer. And I'm assuming, I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming that it's going to come out officially uh, in the fall of 2022. That's when you are going to be able to get a brand new system with macOS Ventura or just upgrade your current system to that new operating system.